so a brief introduction of uh, who we are. We are uh, a team of uh, conservation finance, climate finance uh, specialists that are working for IUCN Netherlands Committee and for the Global Resilience Partnership. Uh, we are Maxim Eiselin. Uh, myself, I am Jan Willem Den Besten, Jules Koppen. The three of us are with the IUCN Netherlands Committee. And Jasper Hernberg is with the Global Resilience Partnership. And he is also uh, part of this session of, uh, of four um, uh, meetings where we talk about uh, developing business cases for your climate adaptation projects. And uh, as part of this, uh, uh, this work stream, we work towards uh, the Dragon's Den session on uh, Thursday, where, uh, where you can pitch your idea if you have uh, a project that you, that you would like to pitch. Next slide, please. So today uh, you are in the introduction session. Uh, this is an introduction to the process this week. Uh, and uh, in, in this session, we set the scene for uh, uh, the, the issue of, uh, of, of business case development. We all are working on projects, uh, climate adaptation projects, uh, most of the participants in this, uh, in this week, the CBA 15, most of us are working with local communities on climate projects. And um, there, is, there is a need to, to diversify our, our income uh, for these projects. And so uh, the, the role of, uh, of private finance, the role of, of business development can be uh, a useful way to, to find additional resources for, for your project. So today uh, we, we have a, an introduction of uh, what it means to, to focus on business case development. Um, um, this current session is uh, the introduction to that. And uh, today at one o'clock, we have uh, a more in-depth session about developing your business case. Uh, tomorrow um, at uh, nine o'clock, there is a pitch training that Jasper uh, will uh, lead. Uh, the, the pitch training is meant to, uh, to help you develop a presentation in which you present your um, your project and the potential business case around your project. Uh, and then on Thursday, we have the pitch event where you, uh, you are able to, to present your project to uh, a, a group of dragons. Uh, the dragons are, are critical, uh, but friendly specialists in the finance sector. And they are there to, uh, to ask you questions and give you advice on how to uh, improve your uh, project proposal. Uh, I would like to emphasize that you, you don't have to take part in this pitch session. Uh, of course, we would like to encourage you, but it's not, uh, it's not necessary to join these sessions. You can also join these sessions if you just want to learn, if you just want to uh, exchange ideas, um, and uh, but we of course do encourage you to uh, to take part and to to do pitch your idea because it's a great opportunity to get feedback on your project and on the potentials that it might have to uh, to develop into a project that can attract different kinds of investments. So Friday, uh, the announcement of the winner of the pitch event will be announced. Next slide, please. So today's program is like, uh, like this. We would like to, uh, of course, hear from you who you are uh, and very briefly what you work on. Then we will 
uh, look at what is the finance gap for adaptation, because we all are here because we work in climate action, in climate adaptation with communities. And uh, as most of us will know from experience, it's quite difficult to, uh, to find uh, the necessary resources to, to implement uh, uh, and scale up these projects. Uh, then we will briefly look into what it means to engage business and the private sector in uh, business in, in the development of your projects. And uh, finally, we will uh, tell you a little bit more about uh, how the Dragon's Den session works and the, the pitch training uh, tomorrow that is a, a preparation for the Dragon's Den. Next slide, please. So please, uh, I would like to uh, suggest that we take a round uh, to uh, introduce yourself with your name, your organization and your role. Um, I'm not sure how many participants we have, 18 participants. So um, in order to make good use of our time, let's be brief. Uh, so myself, uh, as I already said, my name is Jan Willem den Besten. I work for IUCN Netherlands Committee. And in this organization, I coordinate our conservation and climate finance work. So who's next? I am Celine de Cruz. I work as a visiting researcher at the International Center for Climate Change and Development. And I'm working on the Climate Bridge Fund along with BRAC, SDI and ICAD. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My name is Maxime Eislin. I work for IUCN in the Netherlands as an expert green economy. I'm a colleague of John Willem. I will be moderating the second session about business case development. I'm younger than 35, I'm 32. And this is the third CBA that I'm attending. I'm Jesper Hornberg. Um, so I'm uh, working with innovation and scaling at the Global Resilience Partnership and co-hosting this with um, John Willem and Maxime and, and Jules. Uh, I am slightly older than 35, uh, but very excited to be here. And this is my third uh, CBA as well, my second mm -hmm. virtual one. And I look forward to seeing you all live next time. <laughs> my name is uh, Zhu Koppen. I am in my second year of my master's study, Forest and Nature Conservation, and currently working at the IUCN Netherlands at the Conservation Finance Department. I'm 27, so a lot younger than 35, luckily still. And uh, in this session, I will be your Zoom host, uh, the guy behind the scenes. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to hearing your pitches and uh, ideas. And this is my first CBA session. Thanks, who's next? Hi, uh, it's me, Laumani. I'm from Nepal. I'm working with Plili Nerds in Nepal. Um, yeah, I'm younger than 35. Currently, I'm 29. And this is my second time in CBA, but uh, first time in Dragon's Den. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Welcome. you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Prabhak Bhagavad. I am from Bangladesh. I am working at, in an NGO, IPSHA, as a program manager of relocation of climate displacement program. Uh, and I attended the CBA uh, in 2009-2012, which held in Dhaka, Bangladesh. And so thank you again. Uh, when it CBA earlier conference in Bangladesh, I attended the program. All the thank you so much. Welcome. Hello. Can I go? Yes. Hello. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, I am Kagan. Yes, I am Kaganga John. Kaganga John. Hello, Kaganga. What, what organization are you uh, working for? I'm working with the, the and uh, yes, uh, Chikandra Environment Association. And uh, I'm a smallholder farmer. I have been practicing promoting local innovation 
which is more of community-based adaptation, promoting it. I have been I Oh, it's some problem with this mic. I'm uh, an activist for... Problem with uh, mic. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, you are breaking up. Maybe uh, uh, chip in later when your uh, connection is better. Yeah. I'm a photo fellow, and. Uh, uh, I'm happy to do this meeting to know. Uh, there's some problem with the audio systems. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks a lot. We we w when your connection is better, you you always uh, can uh, can come in and uh, and <clears throat> and give your final details. Who else? We have 18 participants. So. <clears throat> <clears throat> May I? Yes. Hi, uh, everyone. My name is Dini Tamang. Uh, currently working as Resilient Small Advisor in Mercy Corps. Uh, I work in a resilience, a disaster resilience flagship program uh, that works across three countries. Um, I'm currently from Nepal. Uh, I'm turning 35 uh, this October. And this is my first CV. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Emil Harry Kishin and I'm a policy officer at the Global Resilience Partnership, uh, one of the uh, co-conveners of, of the Dragon's Den working with Jesper Hornberg. Um, I'm from South Africa, joining you here today from Johannesburg and I'm younger than 35. Um, really looking forward to engaging with all of you and we'll get an opportunity to engage more directly in some of the breakout sessions. Thank you all and uh, engage with you soon. Hi everybody, my name is Teresa Corcoran. I'm in the uh, communications team at IID, one of the organizers of CBA 15. Um, I'm not actually here to join one of the sessions and work through a business uh, case pitch, uh, rather just to sort of listen in. Um, I'll be tweeting from the sessions and hopefully doing some sort of mini interviews with, um, with a few of you, because um, my, my role really is to sort of cover the event. Uh, older than 35 by a considerable amount, um, and it's my fourth mm -hmm. CBA. Nice to meet you all. Thank you, Teresa. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Josephine Warnoff from uh, Brussels, Belgium. I'm a visiting attorney working at the Environmental Law Institute. In, uh, so they are based in DC, but I'm based in Belgium. Uh, I'm working mainly with uh, small scale fisheries, coastal communities, and uh, I'm still younger than 35, and it's my first time attending CBA, so I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see so many young people. I forgot to tell you, but you probably saw that already, that I'm older than 35, but that may be clear. Uh, so who's next? Yes, hi. My name is Chad Simonaro. I'm coming from Tanzania, working with NGO called the Sustainable Development and Management Action as a technical worship officer. I'm 34 years, and this is my first time to attend CBA. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Did everyone have a chance to introduce him or herself? Okay, now I come. This yes, is, do uh, come. Do come in. <laughs> uh, my name is a uh, uh, very, very big one. I'll make it short. JV. Uh, it's very difficult to pronounce for you. JV. Jagannath Venkatramaya. And the organization I am from, uh, uh, Bangalore University. Uh, and the role is I'm a, a technical advisor to Water Institute. 
uh, which is attached to civil engineering department of the university. And also I am a uh, retired uh, scientist engineer at ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, as a ground support. My domain was uh, the ground support in the water supply, sanitation, and environmental facilities. And I am from, uh, uh, and also a research scholar since 2015 in uh, climate resilient uh, uh, urban water security. And uh, I must uh, also say one more point here. I'm greatly benefited by IAED uh, because in 1992, I was one of the lucky ones to get Sustainable Development Library gift in the year 1992. And I met uh, David, old friend at uh, IAED headquarters two years back. <laughs> and uh, I'm not younger than 35. I'm uh, a little lesser than double 35 because my age is 64 now, running. And uh, I have attended uh, many uh, programs of IAED in the lockdown period. And uh, a significant one has been the Gobeshana at Bangladesh. And it has been extremely enriching. That's it. I look forward for uh, enabling community to take care of its environment. And this dragon uh, is a, you know, is a, is a, uh, pleasant surprise for me, in fact, because I'm aware of this partnership and uh, I look forward for uh, learning and also bring some uh, a partnership in the ongoing project. We have a good number of projects in Bangalore, urban water, dry, uh, storm water management, uh, river, uh, and things like that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Th thank you, Jananata. And uh, great to hear uh, your diverse experience and background. And um, uh, I, I would like to also uh, say that we are here to, to learn from each other, to meet each other, to find ways to, uh, to, to, to collaborate, to share networks. So um, I would also uh, uh, encourage to, uh, to, to, to take part by asking questions, by making comments, either in the chat box or by raising your hands, because this is not about us. Uh, producing a, a whole load of, uh, of information. Uh, we, of course, give a little bit of information, but mostly these sessions are to, uh, to, to, to collaborate and work together and learn from each other. And unfortunately, we have to do this uh, via uh, this abstract uh, online system. But at the same time, it's, it's great uh, because it does work even uh, when we are not physically together. So. Um, yeah, so who, who is next? Who hasn't been able to present him or herself? Um, I. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, my name is uh, Sheikh Abdel Kader Baba. I'm working for TMG Research. Uh, it's a Berlin based uh, think tank working on sustainability, sustainability issues. So I'm a research associate and uh, I'm responsible for two projects in Benin and Burkina Faso. Uh, in Benin, we have like a two projects, one dealing with sustainable land management and uh, no ledger diffusion, let's say upscaling uh, uh, activities. And the other one is trying to, to use a digital mapping as a way to link land degradation neutrality initiative and uh, land governance. So I'm from Benin myself, but I'm based in Germany and I'm older than uh, uh, 35 years old. It's my first time. To, so thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Czech Abdel. Um, uh, can, I, can I perhaps also uh, do a, a proposal? Could, could everyone... Uh, write their name, their organization, and, and maybe your email address if you want to in the, in the, in the chat so that we, we have an overview of everyone that, that is in this session. Uh, that would be great so that, um, so that we know who, who was here. Uh, so, so yeah, so if you, if you find the chat and if you can, can state your name, organization, and email address, then uh, that would be great. So we can uh, stay in touch uh, if you want, of course. Yep. Um, I think there's still a few people that uh, have to introduce themselves.
anyone who would like to say a few words? If not, uh, as I as I said, uh, do share your information in the chat, and um, I would like to ask uh, Jules to uh, go to the next slide, please. And this is uh, uh, an interaction, an interactive session. Uh, Jules, uh, perhaps you are uh, best placed to uh, to tell us how to use Mentimeter and uh, what the question is. Yes, of course. Uh, with the Mentimeter, uh, you can provide answers, short answers, uh, one or two words. Um, uh, we, uh, on the, the question, which problem do you want to solve or address uh, during these sessions? And uh, then the answers will pop up. We also had this uh, yesterday. So please just go to www.menti.com and then you can fill in the code 47783003. Three, and I will share the Menti now as well. Let me see. And we already have our first answer. Yes, inequality. I like that one because it's uh, one of the most crucial aspects of the work that we do. So yes, indeed, inequality. Uh, I think is a is a very uh, important um, component. Ecosystem degradation lies at the the base of uh, a lot of uh, climate and other sustainability problems. I see access, which uh, which of course also has to do with um, with uh, equality and inequality. I give a little bit more time because uh, many of you were also working on. Uh, in on uh, give, uh, putting your information in in the chat box so Cooking energy, it's also an example of a widespread challenge that um, has links to equality, access to energy, and of course, various health and, uh, and climate implications. Infertile soils related to land degradation. So very interesting. This is a 
interesting mix of uh, issues and challenges that uh, collectively we are working on. And it also shows how just by bringing this relatively small group of 18 people together in one room uh, shows us how it brings together a whole uh, suit of, uh, of relevant, very relevant issues when it comes to community-based adaptation. And of course, each of these issues are uh, facing the, the challenge to, to illustrate what works and what does not work and, uh, and also the challenge to and the opportunity to, to scale up those solutions that do work. So I think this also shows that there's really a, a great diversity of, uh, of issues that we work on, because if, if a lot of uh, us would have given the same terminology, then it would have uh, shown up in a larger font. But um, the way the words are, are presented shows that, uh, that there's a, a whole spread of issues that we're working on. So great, great, very interesting. So I think we can um, move to the next slide. Thanks also for uh, putting your um, information in the chat. And um, we will now focus on uh, some of the, the issues that, uh, that are uh, the focus of these sessions this week, the sessions about business case development and, um, and the, the participation uh, that, that you can uh, make use of to, to take part in the, in the Dragon's Den. So very briefly, uh, some words about the adaptation finance gap. We all work in this area. And so probably we all know uh, how, how large the, the gap is in, in financing. Um, a recent report by UNEP has calculated that um, 711 billion US dollars uh, are needed to, uh, to, 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 to fill the gap that there is in, uh, in climate adaptation work. Um, this report did uh, emphasize that uh, adaptation is starting to be embedded in, in policy and, and planning more and more. So the issue is being taken up by governments in, uh, in policy and planning but the levels of engagement and the quality of instruments is still uh, not always uh, satisfactory. Um, and the levels of engagement are, of course, what we just saw, uh, access for people to climate adaptation uh, solutions and uh, equality in solutions. That is an area where there is still uh, a lot of work to do. Um, now, where the, the business case component comes in is when you look at uh, what investments in uh, things like uh, investment in sustainable dry agriculture or investments in early warning systems, uh, how, how much these kind of investments actually can uh, create in, in return the return on the investment of sustainable measures can, can be great. Uh, so this, this um, report by UNEP uh, calculated that uh, an investment worldwide of 1.8 trillion US dollars in issues such as mangrove uh, restoration, uh, resilient water resources, resilient infrastructure, early warning systems, and sustainable dryland agriculture. If we were able to, to mobilize 
the finance that is needed to make those kind of interventions sustainable uh, and, and supportive to climate adaptation, then the actual benefits that it would uh, provide us would be eight times or almost eight times more. So an investment of 1.8 trillion would actually uh, result in 7 trillion uh, US dollars in, in benefits. Uh, but of course, we all know that uh, to get to, to that amount of finance, a lot has to be done because um, uh, we have to scale up projects. Uh, they have to be embedded well in government policy and planning. And that is the overarching challenge that, that we are faced with. Next slide, please. So how do we uh, uh, close the, the finance gap? Um, uh, actually, you, you, can, you can go to the next slide. So when you look at uh, climate finance and conservation finance, these are uh, categories of, uh, of both public and private finance uh, that, uh, that are uh, mobilized by, by governments and, and by the private sector. And the, the challenge is uh, to, to combine uh, climate finance uh, for adaptation and mitigation and find ways for these flows of finance to also uh, contribute to uh, to conservation of nature and nature-based solutions uh, because the most uh, uh, sustainable solutions in the long run are solutions that uh, strengthen the capacity of landscape landscapes the capacity of of nature to contribute to both climate uh, mitigation and adaptation next slide please so when we talk about developing your, your business case, um, uh, it's, it's an area of expertise that uh, typically is not uh, always part of our own uh, backgrounds. Um, and uh, if, if you feel that uh, uh, thinking about business case development is something new and something uh, 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 that, that you have not worked with before, then it's, it's important to, to know that uh, you're not alone in this. Uh, a lot of us, including myself, uh, we, we often have a background in conservation, in sustainable development, in community-based uh, uh, solutions. And this, this new thinking about how we can diversify income for our projects is, is really something that, that we, we can uh, learn and uh, develop together, uh, even if we don't have uh, uh, a degree in, in business development or, or economics. So please don't be um, uh, scared away uh, by this, by this uh, topic, it's it's not an easy topic. But uh, as as you will see in this coming week, there there is really a, a possibility to uh, to 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 change and to to develop our uh, projects <clears throat> to have at least a business component or to 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 look at uh, uh, how your projects can can generate uh, an income. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> uh, in the session this afternoon uh, at one o'clock, we will go into more detail uh, of uh, what, what is a business case. But when you, when you bring it down to the most basic uh, elements, then uh, your, your, your business case is, uh, is a, a writing down of uh, <clears throat> the answers to, to some basic questions. And the, the most basic questions uh, that you answer in your business case are uh, first, what is your product or service that your project uh, provides? 
So what, what is the solution? What is the technology or what is the service that your product delivers? And the second question is, uh, how does it create value? Uh, how does it, um, uh, how does the service or the product um, uh, create something that, that other people might need? Of course, value uh, can be an economic value. Uh, so how, uh, how does your product um, represent something that people would like to pay for? Uh, or how does your service uh, provide something that, that people might pay for? And so the, the, the third question is, after you have uh, very clearly defined what the value is that you create, then the question is, uh, who might pay for it? Uh, because value uh, um, has to do with uh, uh, something that uh, uh, people or other organizations are in need of. And these can be material uh, things like uh, tools or, or uh, products, but it can also be services. And so, for example, reducing emissions of CO2 or reducing uh, the risk for flooding. That, of course, is also a value. That's a service that uh, people uh, will need or organizations or governments need because they need to protect themselves, for example, against uh, the impacts of climate. And so then the important thing is to know who might pay for it and when, because that, that is then the, the link to, uh, to, to finding uh, investment. Uh, because um, if, if someone wants to pay for your product or your service, then it can be marketed. Um, I would like to also emphasize that if you have any questions, clarifying questions already, uh, with each uh, slide, then please raise your hand uh, because then we can address uh, questions immediately. And if there's no questions, then I would like to go to the next slide. And uh, this uh, little video will, uh, will teach us, will show us what are the elements of a business case. Hey there, welcome back to Best Practice TV. I get asked a bunch of questions and today I'm just gonna just do a quick little business plan for you. It's something that I get asked a lot and we're in the, you know, we're in the business improvement business and you know, the establishment of businesses and you know, setting yourself out on the right path. So in this episode, I'm just gonna put down a couple of points, they're things to focus on. And I think from my perspective, they're definitely, you know, they're, they're priorities. And I think that the biggest thing that people, you know, they forget to do is just get out there and be in business. So first, First and foremost, the, there's a couple of questions that I want you to think about and go through these as a bit of a checklist. And the first one is, who are your customers? And the second is, when will they pay you? Like literally, from today, when is a customer gonna pay you? Now, if you haven't spoken to a customer yet, then you're gonna to need to think about, all right, well, when are they gonna physically pay you? The third thing I want you to think about is, like, when will they pay you? Because you've gotta deliver the service. So this is about what is the product or service. You know, and we, and we can write that down, but you wanna break that down and you wanna just say, you want to ask questions like, what's the pain? What's the need? And I think it's all too often that people have, you know, they come to me with a bunch of great ideas and, you know, this is what I'm going to do and this is amazing, etc., etc. But step back from a customer's perspective and 
I want to see you consuming your product or service on a daily basis, whether it's vitamins, whether it's a gym, whether it's business improvement processes. If you're consuming it, then you can understand that you've got a particular pain point, you've got a particular need, and this thing is actually the solution. So when we say, what is the product or service? This thing here is this solution. And the last thing I want to say, you know, and this is remembering this is kicking off a business, is that you don't need an office. You don't need money, you don't need all of those things in place because everything's cloud-based now. You can get your Gmail for free, you can get your Apple subscription for free, you've got probably already got your mobile phone in your pocket. And in fact, from best practices perspective, Yes, I'm an embracer of technology, but I basically run this business with my iPhone. Gone are the days where you need, you know, tons and tons of cash. You want to just get out and prove that your solution is a solution for the pain points and the needs of your customers and that who are your customers and when will they pay you? Literally, you've got your t-shirt that you sell and they're going to pay you. Like, I'm going to hand it to you, Lex, right now and I'm going to say, here's your t-shirt and you're gonna give me my five bucks or my 20 bucks in exchange for that t-shirt. Are they gonna pay you tomorrow? Like tomorrow's, you know, whatever day of the week tomorrow is when you're watching this video, understand that. And I'm ultimately the very last thing here is who or where or when, who or where or when, and let's write who, is your hungry crowd. And this is really important, right? Because this hungry crowd is the big network that the customers start coming to you. And, and that hungry crowd, how do you engage with that hungry crowd? What value do you give for that hungry crowd? And I think it's really important when you're kicking off this process that you go through that and understand that. So give to your hungry crowd. Your hungry crowd will build trust and rapport with you. They'll like you, they'll understand you, they'll dictate to you whether you've got a solution. Um, you can do your market research with that hungry crowd. So it might be all of your followers on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or all those social media platforms Forms, that's your hungry crowd or the people that read your articles or your blog posts or, or, or your friends and family they're going to give you this feedback from a market research perspective don't go and throw heaps of cash out all of the other things that you don't need just focus on providing an amazing the best product or service and you'll win thanks for watching so this is uh <clears throat> Sorry, I. Uh, so, so what you see here is a. Hey guys, welcome back to Best Practice TV. In this episode of Talking Business, I'm talking to Simon Bedard. Oh, you could you uh, stop the video? Yeah. So what we saw here is basically a very commercial video uh, where someone is explaining uh, how to uh, write a clear business case plan for any kind of startup or company that has something to sell. Uh, and I think it's very interesting to, to look at that because this is purely commercial, but it links very much to <clears throat> our work and it can be very useful for our work because uh, a business opportunity uh, is based on what I mentioned earlier, a problem, a problem that someone feels and a solution that you as an organization might have that is an answer to the problem. And the person or the group of person or the organization that acknowledges that this is a problem, they might actually uh, be ready to pay for the solution. And if we manage to, uh, to, to develop our projects in such a way that we very clearly identify for whom it actually is an answer to their problem, then we can think about uh, uh, attracting uh, finance for such a project. Because to attract investment in your project, you need to have an income stream. You have to sell something. Of course, not all projects uh, will be suitable for this, but <clears throat> a lot of sustainability projects uh, can be uh, uh, can attract payment from customers and can 
get an investment to to scale up that solution uh, uh, if 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 you have these elements very clearly so for example uh, over the years we have seen projects for example for solar freezing uh, so solar freezers uh, small uh, free freezing uh, 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 freezers like uh, like um, how do you call it uh, a, a freezer in which you can, for example, store fish uh, with a solar panel, so that it can be placed in markets uh, on on a on a local level in in a small uh, uh, form. Um, there's a real need for something like that in many places because in markets fish is being sold, uh, but uh, because there is no uh, cooling system, <clears throat> a lot of fish goes waste. So if you have uh, a, a freezing uh, unit that is small enough to to be portable to to use in markets, and it also has, uh, for example, a solar system so that you can use it where there's no electricity, then you you clearly have a product that solves uh, the problem of a lot of people. A lot of people sell fish on markets. It's the same with mangrove restoration, which can be a solution for uh, uh, flood protection. Uh, and if you create your solution for mangrove restoration in such a way that a government or an insurance company uh, benefits from it, then you can translate that product into something that that insurance company or that government might pay for. So that's that's the kind of thinking uh, uh, that we can learn from the business world, uh, and in that way we can develop projects uh, that that have uh, an income stream, that have a clear customer, and that customer becomes clear if we know very clearly who has a problem and how our solution is a is a. Uh, is an answer to to that particular problem. So some of you here uh, are probably already working in such a way. So please do uh, later when we have the question and answer, do also uh, contribute uh, to the discussion by by showing your idea. And of course, in the session this afternoon, we will go a little bit deeper uh, in in um, in into this. So so please do share also your. Uh, experiences with this already because for some of us it's very new and for some of us we might already have some experience so um so the starting point of course is always an idea an idea of how you think you can change or improve the world an idea that is the answer to someone's problem or to the problem that we all face such as climate change um, and it's very important to realize that uh, to come from an idea to a project and to come from a project that, uh, that has the potential to attract uh, customers, to attract finance, uh, you always uh, have to collaborate and, and work together. So you, you, you have your idea. That idea is based on your own experiences, your expertise, your inspiration. Uh, once you have that idea, then do talk to people around you, people that you know, or maybe look for people that have the expertise that that you can uh, that can benefit your project. And um, uh, the important thing is to to interact and discuss, and because only with the people around you that have uh, uh, a similar interest or that have a certain expertise, only through that interaction you can. Um, give your ideas legs to say to to start moving into uh, the direction where it becomes uh, uh, you know a, a real possibility to uh, to to create that solution. So, um, in order to to let the idea fly, uh, there will be several steps of uh, talking, discussing, uh, testing. Uh, and, and for that, we always have to use each other's networks. And so that's why also this session is about opening uh, each other's networks to each other. 
so that we can uh, test and, and discuss and, and in, improve uh, our ideas. Next slide, please. So, <clears throat> by the way, there is a, a little uh, black um, disturbance in my video. I don't know if everyone has that. Yeah, I can see it now. Very dirty in our, yeah, yeah. I have the same. I thought it was just my, my screen. Yeah, no, I also just noticed it. So anyway, this afternoon we will go into more detail uh, on this. So um, we, we can skip this slide of, you know, when you, when you think about a return on investment, of course, you have to create a return by selling something. And then uh, your return on investment is, uh, is a simple calculation. It's the, the return, the income minus uh, the costs that, that you have. Um, so it's revenue minus costs. That, that's your return on investment. It's, it's a, quite a central, uh, important uh, part of the, of the business case. Anyway, we can go to the next slide. And um, we can also uh, uh, skip this slide, but um, you will quickly see that there's uh, a lot of different uh, options to, to create value, different kinds of products and services. And we will go into this uh, more deeper this afternoon in the afternoon session. And what we also are going to do this afternoon is um, look at uh, the business uh, canvas model. Again, this looks uh, like something very uh, technical and complicated. The first time I saw it, I thought, uh, I thought like, oh, this is really advanced stuff. But it's simply uh, a way to structure, structure your ideas and structure the components that could make up uh, your your business case. And so, let's uh, don't don't be uh, scared away by by all these different elements. It's, it's just a, a logical uh, presentation of your potential business case. Um, so this is, again, something that we will go into uh, in this afternoon session at one o'clock. And next slide. Then I would like to open the floor now for 10 minutes for questions and answers. And Maxime, you might have already seen some questions in the chat box. In the chat. And otherwise, I would like you uh, to ask you to raise your hand if you have uh, any questions. Or comments, of course. Does anyone already? Yes, Jaganata. Please, you have the floor. Uh, Jan, actually, I'm very, very happy to say that uh, in, a, in a business uh, context, uh, we had a sufficient uh, uh, orientation. Uh, so that way I must compliment. Uh, and my observation is this way, uh, very subtle. Uh, you see, we are sufficiently old in the climate adoption and uh, uh, various business models. Uh, what I would like to respond is the various uh, good practices, the best practices, uh, especially community enabled ones. I think that should be the, the riding, you know, uh, or the reference uh, benchmarks. So that will uh, uh, strengthen our thinking because uh, uh, I find it in my own case, like uh, I went through the various questions you have put product then value, then payment, all those things I try to answer in the process of your presentation. And I found uh, they are very realistic. Uh, only one thing was it should be uh, you know, time and again validated to one's experience or elsewhere. Uh, this is one observation I would like to make at this stage because when IAED can publish 200 and plus uh, bigger cities, uh, climate resilient uh, water security, that is my research area. 
I think uh, I look very seriously at those good practices. Uh, good means, uh, you know, the, the, the various lessons learned. That's one yeah. uh, observation I would like to share with you right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> very important. Yeah, <clears throat> that's a very important point. Yeah. Um, I see a question <clears throat> in, the, in the chat from Chikumbutso. I hope issues around financing and investing will be tackled. Sometimes it's difficult to access startup funds for uh, massive sustainable ideas. Uh, I, if I understand you right, that it is difficult to, um, to find uh, resources for larger uh, projects. Is, is, that, is that what you mean? Chikumbutso, could you maybe... Um, Ah, okay, yeah. Yeah, well, the, the, the issue, of course, is that uh, in order to attract larger... Okay, yeah, I can see that your microphone's not working. I'm sorry about that. Um, the, 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 the challenge is, of course, to, to find finance for larger projects, projects that are scaled up, um, but the, uh, the, the, the solution, of course, first has to be tested. Um, and for the solution to be tested, you, you often need technical assistance or money for technical assistance. Uh, yeah, for technical assistance. So <clears throat> you, you have to have a pilot first uh, and often public funding is, is often the best option or, or philanthropic funding is, is often the best option for a first pilot. And then once you have tested your idea, then um, it, is, it is possible. And if it, is, if it turns out to be a, a useful solution where uh, there is customers for uh, organizations or individual peoples that, that might want to pay for it, then with that first pilot and the results, uh, you can then uh, start scaling up. But it's, it's true that it's, 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 it's not, uh, it's not a, a quick fix you you have to first really invest in in a in a in a in a test case uh, before you can access larger uh, funds or or even private finance um i'm Uh, I see that Charles, you ask uh, if the business idea should only focus on the climate issue. Um, for this exercise, because the conference, you know, this is a conference about uh, community-based adaptation. So, um, so preferably your, your solution has at least a climate adaptation or maybe a climate uh, uh, mitigation focus, uh, but also it, it should, should focus on a local a solution that is developed by or developed in close collaboration with um, local communities. So I hope that answered your question about the climate angle. Um, then uh, Celine, uh, you are asking, is the objective of the session to learn how to write a business plan or is it about securing funds? <clears throat> well, uh, the first step, the, the answer is that the first step towards securing funds is uh, to, to understand better how to develop a business plan. Uh, and because that component of uh, our work is, is often uh, the, the component that, that uh, needs the most attention, uh, that's why this session is indeed uh, focusing on how do you develop the, the components for a business case, uh, even if it's just a rudimentary business case, and then how do you present that to a group of potential investors. So it's a bit about uh, uh, both uh, securing funds and business plan. Uh, Celine, I hope that answers your question question. Yes, indeed, I see that you already say perhaps both. Uh, of course, it also depends, like some of us, some of you might already have a well-developed business plan or business case. 
and then you can focus uh, in this session with our support you can focus most on the on the presenting to investors part how do you attract investors um but some of us might still be at a very early stage of business case development so we use for example the next session uh, to to zoom in into more detail uh, on on the business case development component but in both cases whether you are advanced or whether you're early stage uh, you can and you are encouraged to uh, to take part and as i say again this is about learning from each other so the best teachers of course are are you all because you have the project you have the experiences and uh, and you have the the building blocks for your own business case but also the building blocks uh, potentially for uh, for your colleagues that that are here in in the room with us now so so yeah do join and do uh, share your uh, your own experience experience your own learning your own um, troubles and how you overcome them uh, because we can all learn from that it's a great topic because every single day that you work with uh, project developers like yourself and and people with early stage businesses every day you learn something new uh, and and that's that's the that's a very inspiring part of uh, working in this field of work uh, are there any other questions do raise your hands or in the chat indeed If there are if there are <clears throat> no other questions, then um, I would like to give the floor to Jesper, who will uh, tell us a little bit more about the the Dragons Den itself that is uh, going to be organized on Thursday, and uh, he will introduce the Dragons, those people from the financial sector and the sustainability sector that are going to look at our proposals and uh, um, ask us some questions uh, about uh, what we present to them. So Jesper, you uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, Johan Willem, for, for taking us through um, that, that quite rich content. Um, uh, we are always nervous when we organize these that we will drop people, but I see that we haven't, so that's good. <laughs> um, I mean, what we're really trying to address, as Jan Willem is pointing out, is how do, you, how do you take your idea and how do you turn it into something that's useful for the market that you can turn into something sustainable? And in, in this particular case, it, 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 it's obviously related to climate and, and nature-based solutions. Um, and then, then try to, to scale that. And there are several steps in this process. You need to um, refine and define your idea. Um, and as we heard, uh, talk to the to the people that are doing it, uh, that, that might need it, um, your hungry crowd, as it was referred to in the video, um, and then shape uh, your execution so that you can hit all those targets. Um, and that's what we want you to do here. And, and we have four very exciting dragons um, that have, um, in various roles, done this themselves. They've, they've um, developed their own um, um, uh, models. They've invested in different types of models. They've worked uh, on the leading edge on innovation, uh, trying to get finance to um, and solutions for that matter uh, to um, really pioneering initiatives um, in various communities uh, around the world. Um, Jules, I don't know if we have a, a slide with the yeah we do. Okay, so I'm, that that makes my job so much easier. Um, I'll start from the right. Um, we have um, a gentleman uh, called Adam Bornstein. He, he works with innovation and innovative finance and systems change at the Danish Red Cross, has been based in Addis Ababa for many years and due to COVID uh, currently in, in DC, but really cutting edge, uh, having launched uh, uh, various platforms around insurance and uh, community currency, all aimed at building uh, better capacity and business models um, out there in, in, in various communities. Really sharp mind and you'll enjoy getting questions uh, uh, from him. He's also extremely amicable and, and nice as a person. Um, 
Uh, then to the left of him, we have Edith Kiss, who is in investment and development. Um, she's a director at Mirova Natural Capital. Having reviewed many, many different initiatives, she will be able to ask you specific questions on um, how you are planning to, to scale things up. Uh, also, very nice. Um, uh, knows what she's doing and ha has been in this space for a, for a long time. Next to her, we have uh, someone I'm very pleased to, to bring on as a, a dragon this year, uh, Doris Bosibori. She, she actually won the Dragons then uh, two years ago in Addis, uh, as it happens, um, and had a, a very touching um, presentation where she really showed the passion for what she's doing, which won the, the jury uh, over entirely. Um, and she, she had a, a strong win then. Uh, but I would say that all the participants then and, and all participants in all these Dragon Den sessions that we, we run, we see you as winners because you have the courage to bring stuff forward. And unfortunately, only, only some of you will be picked, but all of you will be exposed to the, the learnings that we share here, as well as a wider network. So you will find it, it useful. Doris has done it by herself. She's from Nairobi, uh, where she has a, a community project um, running as a business uh, on waste collection. And as you can imagine, it has been quite challenging uh, during COVID, um, but she's um, soldiering on, very impressive. Uh, next to uh, her, we have Kojo Anan. Uh, he does many things. So being a manager uh, of Vector Global and executive vice chairman of Made in Africa are only two of the things that, that he's, um, he's involved in. Um, uh, investments, uh, philanthropy, business modeling. Um, he will also have very intelligent questions uh, for you. I should mention, I mean, I've, I've been involved in, in pitch sessions for a long time. It's always a bit scary to meet dragons and especially if you have dragons of, of, of this caliber. Um, so I just wanna sort of disarm it a little bit and say that these are all lovely people and they're taking time out of their quite busy schedules, all of them to listen to you. So they're interested in you and you need to keep that in mind. Uh, what you present to them, they will really listen to and they will, they will pay attention. Thank you. Um, Jules, yes, here we go, thank you. Um, what are the criteria? Now, Jan Willem has, has covered a lot of this and Maxime will cover more of it in the afternoon and then I will cover some of it tomorrow morning. Um, but it's, it's this what you will be uh, uh, judged on. Um, we will look at innovative climate impact. So to the question earlier, uh, that is important. Um, it needs to be an innovative solution that will have a positive impact uh, and contribute significantly to climate adaptation objectives. So that's important to keep in mind. The other one is sustainable development. Uh, does it have a direct uh, positive impact on one or more of the SDGs? Um, this being community focused, we, we're very interested in local employment, uh, as well as health and, and equality, uh, actually things that were raised in, in the Mentimeter uh, uh, questionnaire we had. Business case, you can have a fantastic idea uh, and um, it might not be a business case, but it's still a fantastic idea. For us, we needed to have a business case. It needs to have clear, um, uh, clear structure, it needs to be viable as a business. Um, uh, you need to show, and you don't need to go into too much detail because you will only have a few minutes to present this, but it needs to make sense that this is actually something that could work. Uh, that's important from a financial perspective. Scalability. Um, a lot of initiatives work really well, very locally. And, and what we're looking for is if it's possible to scale. And by scale, we, we, we mean things like growing in place and, and becoming a significant player in your region, your geography. It could also mean that it can be replicated and it can be copied in, in, into other places. Uh, so, so that's also uh, of interest. And finally, and, and this is a point we will come back to uh, a few times, team, who are you? Uh, what are your qualifications? What's your experience? Um, how well do we think you can uh, execute? Are you professional? Uh, can you present in a, in a good way? And, and we will go through tomorrow morning a couple of um, suggestions to keep in mind when, when you present. Also very important, uh, passion. 
uh, is this something you really want to do? And, and that comes across in, in any presentation. So with that, I, I'll, I'll, um, I'll go on mute again and I look forward to talking to you all more on this uh, uh, in future sessions. Thanks a lot, uh, Jesper. Uh, so here, um, a quick, quick overview of what's next. Uh, we just did the introduction, uh, extensive introduction of, uh, of, this, um, of this line of, uh, of work and uh, what we're going to do this week. Uh, so next is uh, the afternoon session at one o'clock where we will go a little bit deeper into uh, how, what, it, uh, what it means to make your own business case. Uh, and then tomorrow, uh, Jesper will, uh, will provide uh, in-depth pitch training uh, in the afternoon. Do I say that well? Yeah, it's in the afternoon, the pitch training. It's in the morning, uh, I believe. Let me just double check. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, you're, you're right. It's in the morning at nine o'clock. You will find it in the schedule. And... Um, so this is this is a, a great bycatch of this uh, of this week, I think, because uh, it's all very well to uh, to talk about your your project and see how it can be turned into a business case, but actually the pitch of your project is uh, is of course uh, a very important uh, component uh, of this. So to get this uh, professional pitch training, uh, I think is uh, is 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 really uh, very very welcome for uh, for every one of us. Uh, so, uh, so that's great tomorrow. And then on Thursday, there's the actual Dragon's Den in, uh, in the afternoon at one o'clock. And uh, the winner of this, uh, of this uh, Dragon's Den pitch event is, of course, all of us, because everyone who, uh, who takes part in this uh, Dragon's Den presentation session uh, is, is a winner. Uh, but uh, but one one of these uh, one of us will uh, will be announced as um, as uh, the best by the dragons, uh, and uh, the winner will be um, will be uh, selected on the basis of the, the dragons um, uh, advice. But also it will be combined with a uh, with an audience vote. So it's a combined public vote as well as. Uh, the, the verdict of the dragons. Next, please. Are there any questions about this uh, schedule for this week or uh, about any component of what we just talked about um, or any comments? Uh, perhaps you already have a project in mind that you, uh, that you would like to pitch. Don't hesitate to, uh, to check that with us to uh, already uh, inform us or to, uh, to discuss uh, it here or, or ask your questions. The floor is open. It can of course also be process questions. Mm. I Jan, I have, I have yeah. one small doubt. <clears throat> To kindly educate me on this. Uh, we have a number of projects ongoing. I'm referring to an urban, uh, you know, you know, metropolis on uh, water resource management. Uh, some some inputs from uh, the bilateral, some on loan basis, and some on the uh, local, uh, you know, mobilization of resources. In the dragons uh, context, uh, will the ongoing projects also be considered? If if your project has the potential to 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 create a business case, then then yes. But your presentation should show how you will translate your current project into a potential business case. Of course, if you're in an early stage, it is also fine to show how you need first more public finance or how you need uh, uh, a smaller impact investor or how you will use philanthropic money to test your idea and then work towards 
something that you can sell. So any stage of your project is fine, as long as it does have the indication or the, the potential or the, uh, or the objective to, to turn to a business case. Thank you very much. Thank you. And remember, you can present something to an investor that has all the figures, all the, the, the calculations are right. But for an investor, it also means that they look for the, the, the idea, the passion, the vision behind your project, the team. So actually, much of what you show in your presentation are not necessarily just about economics and the exact data, which often you don't have anyway at, this, uh, at an early stage, but it's really about who you are, what your vision is, what your team is with whom you uh, okay. want to take this a, a step further. It's very clear in that uh, tabular column, you could make out, yes. It is well uh, addressed, okay. I see one question in the chat, is business plan the same as a project proposal according to us as a nonprofit organization? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, a business plan is a proposal, uh, but it is structured in such a way that uh, that you uh, that you show how your pro project can uh, can become a business. And a business means that you sell something, so you get uh, a payment for your service or your product pro product. So it it means a different way of of designing and implementing your project, but the, the, business, the business plan, uh, of course, can be seen as a project proposal, but with these particular specifics of uh, a business proposition. Any other comments, questions? Reflections. Anything you felt was missing in this introductory session? Maybe just to add um, that um, we'd be happy to review your, your pitches as you develop them. Um, so you send emails to us with them. Um, maybe we need to share our emails actually in the chat so you have them. But um, uh, happy to review them. Uh, it will be your pitches. You will do them, but we're happy to provide feedback uh, on them. The emails are also on the last slide for you to see. Perfect. Yeah, but very good point, um, Jesper. Uh, the coming days, we are there to help you to review your presentation. Um, the the pitch event with the dragons is is also just uh, a two hour session uh, so you 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 should imagine that you you will only speak for three to five minutes so that means that you will have a, a powerpoint of uh, three to five slides uh, how long it exactly will be we decide on the day before the, the dragons then event so on wednesday we will announce whether your presentation will be uh, three or five minutes, because it depends on how many people are there that want to participate. If we have a larger number of people, then we, uh, we will ask for three minutes, otherwise five minutes. So, uh, and as we all know, uh, making short presentations is, uh, is very difficult. It's very difficult to boil it down to the most important points. And so we are here uh, for you uh, online, um, personally, I will also be available in the in the evenings to have uh, to have a look and uh, discuss. Uh, if if we share uh, mobile phone numbers, we can also communicate with WhatsApp. Um, but you know, you are in charge, so you you can choose uh, what medium you want to, uh, to communicate. But of course, uh, sending us your pitch by email. Is, uh, is is the the, the, the basic, uh, and we can uh, we can then uh, give input and advice. Uh, 
And um, yes, uh, I'm just looking at the time. Do we have more time for questions, Shu? Uh, we could, but we could also go to the last Manti of the session. Yeah, um, uh, I just see uh, one question by uh, Kaganga John. One of our expectations for some of us was to find how we can be linked to development partners, funders, donors. Will this be possible after the training? Yes, of course. Uh, we can, uh, on the basis of, uh, of your uh, proposal, we can uh, sit down with you either this week, but also uh, later to see what kind of donors or investors might be uh, suitable for your particular project. Again, in this room, we have a whole range of early stage projects, maybe something is just in an, in the, in, in an idea phase, that's all fine. And some projects might be further developed. And each of these projects have different funding needs and funding opportunities. And indeed, um, we are here to advise you on that. So this, uh, this trajectory this week is much more than just your pitch and just expose yourself to these uh, frightening dragons. <laughs> it, this is really about uh, you know, sharing our networks uh, and, and we will ha be happy to give you advice also after this week. And um, by the way, I don't know if anyone has ever seen a TV program called The Dragon's Den. It's in, in some countries this is being broadcast and I think online you will find uh, some episodes I must emphasize that our dragons are much more benign and friendly than uh, the dragons that you might see in these TV shows, because these TV shows, of course, are developed to, uh, to, uh, to be a little bit uh, sensational. Uh, and uh, our dragons are uh, very friendly and they're there to, uh, to help you as well. So yes, in answer to your question, we will uh, be happy to, uh, to advise on potential donors and funders. And at, again, if your idea is still early stage, then of course, public finance might be the first, uh, the first type of uh, finance to, to access before you can uh, further develop your business case. So that, that's also possible. If there's no other questions, then uh, I would like to give the floor to Jules for the Mentimeter. Yes, we have another Mentimeter. So it's the same thing as uh, an hour ago. Please go to menti.com and fill in the code 31372571. I will share with you the Menti as well. There we go. And you can type everything you want in here, not just a couple of words, you can type in sentences and it will pop up.
great. I see some learning coming in when I already have business ideas and having some tested ideas how to explore further. Just need some tested ideas first. Building a business case needs training. More climate adaptation finance is needed. The business idea should focus on climate issues. That, yeah, the, the, the business case idea should focus on climate issues is for this particular session, right? Of course, business cases uh, are for, uh, for all types of uh, solutions. And yeah, that that uh, one uh, comment about more climate adaptation finance is indeed um, it is indeed something uh, that underscores the importance of uh, this kind of work because uh, with public finance we can do a lot, but the scale of the uh, of of the needs. Our, the scale of the need is so large that we also need to engage the private sector and engage finance, private finance, and uh, develop projects that can be scaled up. Uh, this business case idea might not be as close from injury, but it might be. Yeah, the one that just now pops up is a very important one that the business case is not only about figures, but also about the idea, the passion, the vision and the team. It's really a, a, a very important one. Of course, in the end, you, you need uh, a clear uh, quantitative uh, outline of what you sell, what your earnings might, will be uh and what the costs are so that you can uh, understand whether you have uh, an income stream but besides that uh, indeed the story behind your idea your vision and uh, with whom you are working on this is uh, extremely important so these are great takeaways i'm happy that uh, some of these uh, issues indeed uh, were clear enough in uh, in these presentations indeed understanding the problem is very important and <clears throat> on on that one understanding the problem uh what is also good to know is that most startups and most early businesses they often have to change their focus a few times because they have to really understand whether their product is the answer to uh, a problem that they identified and sometimes, sometimes we might be very much focused on the solution, uh, but then we might not be able to sell it because it doesn't exactly uh, answer the challenge that you want it to, uh, to address. So this is a very important uh, part of this, of this journey to really understand whether your solution is the right or the best answer to the problem that you try to solve. Uh, I here see a message from Runa Khan that says, uh, you, you say very interesting issues raised mainly are commonly shared. But we need to be careful that the reason for why we do something is not lost trying to sell it or in trying to find financing. Yes, I think that's uh, that's a very uh, that's a very good additional comment. Thank you. 
Yes. Do you want to add something to that in, it, in person? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's just that, you know, when we, we need to understand that uh, so often in trying to, that the tool becomes the real, re tool becomes the reason, the tool becomes the way that we look at the, uh, the uh, achievement, the tools become the reason of why we are doing it, whereas tools are only tools. It is a much bigger picture that we are all trying to address. And for this, unless there is sharing and uh, unless the vision is very clear, each of us has, has spaces, have spaces, and these need to be respectfully filled in. And so very often, we get so caught up in trying to sell maybe an idea that we have, in trying to make a project work in the way that we have planned, that we don't see that when we leave it, it is not internalized. And therefore, if it's not internalized, it's not sustainable amongst the communities. And uh, so often we are driven by the availability of where the money is, that we do not uh, have a mutual dialogue on, on where it should be, because we are scared of losing that money. No way can that be done because if we, if we, all of us don't have the strength of making the other understand, it's not that people don't understand, everybody understands, but it's, it needs to be kind of brought out so that it's addressed very, very, you know, my issues are addressed by me strongly. Your issues are addressed by you strongly. We mustn't lose our footage. You know, and I think the strength is what is in the end going to actually uh, give the result because the result is we need to ensure that this climate crisis reaches, uh, you know, uh, uh, people are saved from this climate crisis which are affecting them. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, humility and strength and courage to face donors, humility, strength, courage to understand say you are wrong and restart if you're not do get, getting your tools right. I think these are very important elements of, uh, you know, uh, working with, uh, with climate migrants. Needs change continuously and we need to be focused on the need and not only the tools. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Runa, for that, uh, for that uh, intervention because it's very, very true uh, what you say and um, hopefully uh, we, we can come back to this point also this afternoon. So, so please raise it also uh, uh, in that session uh, if, if, uh, if possible, because it's, it's very, very important. It's a big yeah. uh, trap uh, <laughs> yes. that we can, uh, and, uh, yeah. And of course, when, when we present something like this, we don't immediately uh, talk about the traps, but uh, it's very important, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, and I see... John, John I, I have a, a value add-on to what uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Khan uh, raised. Very quickly, uh, I think the best validation tool is community enabling. Unless we have the community enabling, uh, the most powerful always takes the lead, you know. Uh, all are equal, but some are more equal. People who cannot talk, who cannot speak, but they do better uh, climate adaptability lifestyle. I go by Gobeshana experience. In Bangladesh, the urban poor, they don't have the ownership of the jink sheet roofs, no? but yet they earn 15 to 20,000 rupees from solar uh, power tapping and selling it. I just want to mention, uh, we are very learned. No doubt. And uh, most of the time, my ob observation is it is the technology which traps, not the science. Especially when science hinges with culture, uh, we have tunnel effect. Otherwise, we will have mountain of resistance. You know, we have to go around the mountain all the way and we get aged and we pass the time, you see. And um, uh, conclusively, what I want to tell 
the community enabling to care its environment that should be the best tool you may have any number of tools no issue because see let me tell my own example we have at places obsession of financial supporting you know lot of money comes lot of money comes sometimes people are afraid to take money you see because it's being abused it's being not used for the purpose anyway i want to stop at this stage uh, it's a very good point what mrs khan mentioned i think we should uh, take some lessons from the ongoing because uh, we are uh, uh, 28 years old in the sustainable development the rhythm is set iied itself the earth scan and other it has done a pioneering work researchers from both social sciences management sciences and ecological engineering we are very serious and there is way out uh, it's a very good point raised thank you madam thank you very much <laughs> thank you jagannatha well i'm interested to hear more reflections uh from others so i would like to encourage you to uh to share your uh, thoughts your questions your ideas we still have um 15 minutes till the end of this session so uh kaganga john please you raise your hand so please go ahead you have the floor okay thank you so much and i'm um, some i've been so happy to be in this meeting i was wondering uh what is Dra- dragon training is about but now i am i have started understanding although i need a lot to, to learn that is one two i am from another government organization but my problem is that we have a, 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 the, the 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 donors they we how they give the, 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 the project proposals to the, to the boundary between development and then climate change uh issues because when you look at a development and when you are looking for a project to adapt or to mitigate climate change the difference almost differs but that's also we need some advice where what can we do that is one then two uh, i have been working for this uh, community based adaptation and we have come up with a lot of a lot of innovations which are which are tested practically and i was lucky uh, in uganda we hosted a Uh, CB, uh, CBA uh, 11 that was i think 2017 and uh, part of the delegation came and visited our our community and they were so much impressed with what we are doing but uh, again now from uh, another profit we want to see how we can turn that into a business as you were saying but we need some experts who could help us how can we get such experts because for us we don't have that expertise but we have a lot which we have done at the grassroots which can be turned we want to make it a, a, a something like a agri eco tourism and maybe a garden so that we can attract some funding without depending on donation and so forth how can how can we be assisted people like who are in such a category like me yes <clears throat> kaganga thanks uh, thanks for this uh, for these comments and uh, questions <clears throat> this is exactly um why it is uh, it, it good to 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 get to know you to meet here right now in person um and um what i can say at this point is that in order to understand how you can uh work on uh on 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 developing your your project in that direction the starting point is to uh to to know more about your project and uh, to know where you stand um 
how that balance between development and climate action, how that plays out in, in your particular situation and in, in your particular work and in the work of your communities. So uh, please do share uh, wh whatever information you have uh, and, uh, and then we can, uh, we can discuss those questions. And if you, if you want, <clears throat> of course, we can, uh, we can help you to, uh, to, to, to put it down in, in a short presentation that you can uh, present to the Dragons so that you can get their advice and feedback uh, directly at the end of this week. So do do uh, send us uh, your uh, your thoughts and, and information about your project, then uh, then we can have the, this discussion. Yes, Jan Willem, I think we should move on to the uh, last couple of slides, as we only have ten more minutes left. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I saw a response also to uh, Mr. Karanga's dilemma. So uh, I invite you to, uh, to uh, also uh, continue that discussion in the, in the chat uh, if possible. So <clears throat> to wrap up, when you think about taking part in the rest of this uh, trajectory, uh, when you consider uh, pitching your idea to the dragons, then um, the recap, I think, should be capture in your presentation very clearly what exactly is the problem that you're solving. Climate change, climate adaptation, um, uh, but but very detailed. Yeah, please. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I am from Bangladesh and I am work we are working for relocation of climate displaced people who are uh, induced on climate change related disaster. So also we are working on rehabilitation, skill development, training or resettlement for climate change induced displaced people. This time which will be the best effective approach for relocation or resettlement or rehabilitation for climate change induced displaced people? Because we have a, we observed the ben, uh, we are working on few people for relocation and resettlement, but the demand and numbers of this climate change affected people is large. We are working on a few people, but people is enough, large enough. So how can we manage the all kind uh, so many people for solve their crisis? It is a big problem, and they, because. Requirement is met for many people, but we are working on some people. Yeah, I uh, I I think I won't be able to give an answer in uh, in these last few minutes <clears throat> because, in particular, what you are uh, uh, presenting now is it sounds like a very uh, very complicated and large uh, challenge that you're working on. So uh, you will probably have to compartmentalize. Make make smaller bits uh, for which you 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 find resources for for components of of the solution that you probably need. So, but um, uh, do do contact us and we can have that conversation um, separately <laughs> because um, we won't uh, be able to give those <laughs> to have such a detailed discussion uh, in the last few minutes. But thanks for that, and uh, looking forward to uh, to send uh, to, to to receive your your information. So um, so yeah. So again, to summarize, uh, know very concretely which problem you're solving, and as as uh, Prabal you're now sketching, <clears throat> it's important to bring it down to a, a part of the problem for which you have a concrete solution and for which you might be able to have a product that can be. Uh, uh, sold or that uh, that can be uh, can attract uh, an investment. So so have very clear what's your problem. Then know clearly who might uh, be able to pay for that. Uh, if you if you have in mind to to create a business case around it, and then how <clears throat> exactly it's going to re re generate revenue. So if these three components are in your presentation, 
if you manage to have a clear uh, presenta uh, uh, presentation about these components, then uh, the, the, the foundation of your uh, presentation are there. Uh, once more, we will we'll be in touch uh, in the coming sessions and also separately uh, on the mail or, or otherwise. Um, so next slide, please. <clears throat> so here you find our uh, email addresses. So be in touch uh, and hopefully we see each other in the afternoon session uh, so we can continue this discussion. Again, the session will be designed in such a way that we have uh, opportunity to interact. And um, so looking forward to, uh, to work together for the rest of the week. And thank you very much for your contributions, for the discussion, and uh, see you in the afternoon.